In this segment, I'm going to show you how to uh, modify a PCMCA Wi-Fi card so it has an antenna jack. Now, this is a part of a series of 2.4 GHz mods, and this will be one of the two final products that you're going to wind up with. But before we begin, I want to explain something. Here in the United States, we're actually, uh, we have something called the FCC, or the Federal Communications Commission, or some shit like that. Oh, shit, I'm even licensed by them. I don't even know what they're called. There's FCC ID numbers on these cards. It doesn't matter if you live in the United States, United Kingdom, wherever. You can go to FCC.gov, take the FCC ID number of a Wi-Fi card, and get internal photos of that card. Very helpful for looking inside the card before you even buy it, if you can get the FCC ID number. And uh, this is a primary tool that I personally use in selecting moddable cards. So uh, we're going to go to the computer side, and I'm going to show you going across the FCC's website with an F a valid FCC ID number to get internal photos and how to determine whether or not a card is moddable. The first thing you want to do is go ahead to FCC.gov in your favorite browser. At the top, you'll notice a link to search. We'll go ahead and click that. Scroll down the page quite a bit, and you will notice a link that's for the FCC ID number search. Go ahead and click that link, and you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of information that you can search by. Now, this is just like any other search engine. If you give it the wrong information or uh, incorrect information or too much information, it won't work properly. But for the sake, let's just use a Kosher Pigs card, which starts with RAX. WN4301C and we're going to go ahead and search that FCC ID number. Lo and behold we've got some some results and if you look at the upper and lower frequency coverage which this is also good to find out what frequency a radio device uses um, you can go ahead to the display exhibits on the left hand side and click detail. It's going to give you some warning saying that we're not you know, responsible for misinformation, who cares, whatever. And here's a whole bunch of, of PDF files, which you're going to need a PDF viewer, of course. My choice is a Foxit PDF viewer. You're going to have a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of information. We are interested on the internal photos. So we're going to go ahead and open that up in Foxit. And here's the internal photos. Fun, fun stuff. Really groovy. Here, I'll explain some of the components that you'll see in here. Over here is one of the antennas, and over here is another one of the antennas. This big silver thing, that is an, uh, a radio frequency shield. That's where all the radio frequency circuitry ha uh, is held. Now, these tracks leading outside to the antennas, those are your signal wires. If you notice, let's zoom in a bit. This component right here, which is usually a capacitor, I could be wrong in some cases, could be an inductor, or even a resistor. This routes it to the actual antenna. See, there's one down here as well. Now, there are pads on the board, one here and one here, that are used for actually soldering in uh, some kind of, let's say, RF cable, like some coax, so you can put an external antenna. Now, this is the internal photos of Kosher Pig's card. And if you look down a little bit more, you can even see the insides of the RF box, which is pretty cool because it shows us that we're u it's using an Atheros chipset. Very good, uh, very good information if you need to run Linux. Okay, so let's go ahead and punch in Mustang's card information. Whoop. Okay, do a little bit of searching. And we're going to go to the detail again. And we're going to look for the internal photos. And here's the internal photos of Mustang's card. Let's scroll down a little bit and see if we can get some better pictures. That's the, okay, well, I guess is the best picture they're going to give us. Zoom in a little bit. Now look at that. If you notice right here, here's a native RF connector. This looks, looks like it's an MMCX connector, but his card doesn't have that. However, it does have the solder pads. It's just a matter of rerouting the uh, the signal track using components, which is what we're going to have to do. Now, the thing is, I can't get my hands on an MMCX connector, but it just so happens that this entire area over here is the exact same diameter as LMR195 coax cable. So I could actually hardwire a chunk of coax coming straight from here. So if you can't get your hands on the jack, you can always just go and solder in some coax. 
Okay, that's as much information as I can really give you on this. Let's go over to the rest of the project, shall we? As to be expected, we've got our two uh, PCM CIA Wi-Fi cards. This one's Mustangs, this one's Kosher Pigs. Uh, um, some of the tools that we're going to need. Soldering iron? Definitely. Soldering gun? Probably. Of course, you're going to need some kind of PC, uh, PCM CIA Wi-Fi card. Uh, you're probably going to need some kind of like, you know, precision eyeglass screwdrivers to pry open the card. I'm not going to explain how to open the card. Do some Google searches or just pry the damn thing open and hope you don't fuck it up. We're going to need some kind of razor, box cutter, utility knife. Um, we're going to need some wire cutters, big and small. We're going to need some kind of tweezers. Tweezers could be obtained from any pharmacy, from the chick section, from your sister, from your mom, or from your gay dad. Tweezers are going to be needed. Um... We're going to need a small piece of plastic, which I'll, I'll explain why a little bit later. I use plexiglass if you can't get your hands on plexiglass. You can go and get an old piece of Tupperware top or a plastic ba bin that you put stuff in that you can put under your bed. Just a chunk of plastic from something that will actually hold our radio connector. Our radio connector of choice is a reverse polarity SMA connector that has been successfully crimped with a small length of LMR 100 coax cable. Very, very thin stuff. The reason we're using this is because this card has been modified with LMR-195. It's a lot thicker, which you should understand from previous segments. Um, as to be expected from the internal photos, there is an RF connector right over here, which we are well aware of. And it just so happens that that RF connector is an MMCX, which I couldn't get my hands on. They're hard to get, your, they're hard, get, they're hard to get a hold of. So... Instead of spending five, ten bucks on connectors, I just directly soldered the coax directly to the board, which you should have already seen in previous segments, and we'll see again in future segments. Okay, with all that said, we have to get to the actual business side of moving components around, as I've previously stated um, on the FCC's website. So let's go and get a zoom in closer look and uh, see if we can get this done without blowing stuff up. Okay, this is the component right here that's going to be needed to move to here. Now this card, in fact, doesn't have an RF connector of any kind. What needs to be done is we're gonna have to go and buff this up over here a little bit, just scratch it up. You can use the tip of a screwdriver, you can use a little buffing wheel, just get it abrased, and we're gonna tin this with some solder in a little bit. I'm not gonna show you the entire process because I do need to concentrate and I really don't wanna have to worry about being in frame. And we're gonna tin this pad with some solder so we can come in behind and the signal is going to be soldered to there and the shield is going to be soldered to this metal plate over here. Now, this component is epically small. I mean, epically, epically, oh my god, really, this is going to be difficult. I'm not going to shit you, it is going to be hard. But the bottom line is, with a little bit of perseverance, a little bit of skill, Nerves of steel, something I don't have. Patience, something I don't have. And a lot of talent, something I, again, don't have. You will be able to get this component off. Now, I'm trying to do this on frame for you guys, but I'm probably going to have to do it off frame. But what you do is you heat it up, and you just wedge upward a little bit, and then using your tweezers, try to peel it off. Being very careful not to actually break the, the circuit tracks. Almost. There we go. And it, in fact, has been removed. Can you guys see that? Yeah, that's really small. You can't see that. But anyway, it's been removed. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to pre-tin this with a little bit of solder. Something I forgot to mention that you're going to need also is solder and desoldering grid. And I'm going to pre-tin this. I'm going to pre-tin this, get a nice amount of solder on there so you really cannot fuck it up later. And of course you want to pre-tin your RF connector, which I haven't done yet because I really need steady hands. By the way, this is actually being held inside my desk clamp. Not necessary, but for sake of being on camera, I need it. But anyway, I'm going to cut frame and we're going to go ahead and solder this in place. Okay, there's our component relocated. Now this is our signal track, as I've explained. We've deviated it 
away from the internal antenna over here onto this solder pad. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to buff the hell out of this and try to tin it with some solder. And try to get the side over here. Now this is actually a really, really, really small component. Most of the time the components really aren't this small. That's just vastly, epically small. If you don't have very good solder skills, I would definitely suggest you go and get a USB Wi-Fi adapter instead of trying to mod your PCM CIA. So I'm going to go ahead, see if my solder is going to stick to this. And if it doesn't, I'll go off camera and uh, yeah, there it goes. Sticks like shit to a blanket. Now I'm going to go ahead and take some solder. I'm just going to try to get this on frame for you. And we're going to try to get a little bit of solder on the center conductor. And we're going to try to tin the shield. Got a nice tin coat on it. I think we're going to have to trim off a little bit of the center conductor of the signal line. Just a little too big for my taste. Now you want to try to get the shield and the signal as close together as possible. You really don't want to have too much um, of that center exposed. Okay, that's kind of tacked down. I think I cut it a little too short. There we go. There we go. And it's soldered on. Um, hope you got a good enough angle. Um, really nothing more I can say about this. It's relatively easy if you have the soldering experience. If you're an absolute beginner to soldering, do not attempt this. Okay, we've got everything soldered in. This one has uh, LMR-195. This one has LMR-100. Um, the problem is, these connections are really flimsy. I mean, you gotta be really careful, and if you leave this dangling around, you'll eventually break it off. Shit happens. So what I would advise you to do is take a small piece of plastic. This is right here. This is just plexiglass. And uh, I put it in my clamp. You can also use pliers. And I used a butane lighter to heat up the edge. And I bent it at 90 degrees. And then I drilled a hole in which the reverse polarity, SMA connector, is going to fit. And this is going to be glued to the bottom of the card, of course, with the case on. And there you go. Enough said. Um, going to go ahead off camera and piece the rest of the card together and show you the final product. Here are our two final products. Here's Mustang's card that has been modified with LMR 200 just sticking out of the side. I would definitely put some plastic reinforcement around this. I just haven't gotten around to it. Leading to a nice length about five feet and then nice end connector. And here's Kosher Pig's card. Um, this one was a little bit more uh, in detail. Same process except now we have a reverse polarity SMA connector. Here's our little plastic piece that's supposed to be glued on, but I haven't gotten around to that yet because I'm lazy. Um, I would not recommend using epoxy. You can, but if you do, um, plastics tend to be smooth, so go and take some sandpaper and buff both sides of the, of, of the plastic from the card, from the PCM CIA card, as well as the, the plastic bracket. And glue it in place, you're good to go. Keep, uh, keep in mind that this card has been modified. Only one of the antennas are modified, so you can still use this with its built-in internal antenna. Now it's just a matter of actually going out and about, strapping some antennas to these bad boys, and seeing what kind of performance increase they have. However, we're going to leave that for another day, because we'll be playing with antennas down the road. So I hope you haven't destroyed anything important and expensive. And if you have any problems, questions, comments, hit us up on IRC. IRC is always the number one way to, to reach me personally, because it's telepath telepathetically uh, broadcasted directly into my brain. Um, you can hit us up on the forums. Definitely hit the show notes. Um, ask questions. And, hey, you never know. This, you might actually be able to pull this one off. Although I'm not going to give you that much credit. Ah, sorry, but I forgot to mention. This little bracket down here. Uh, make sure you don't make it too long down the card, because if you put this thing in your laptop and it's too long, it won't fit in. Um, sorry about that.